Good morning and welcome to the uh, Perdicom WatchGuard Wireless Whip Prevention System uh, WebEx. Today we're going to talk about WatchGuard and what we can bring to how to protect the Wi Fi. So, let's see, oh, no, that's not it. That one. There we go. So there are six known threats with uh, when it comes down to Wi-Fi. The first one is the evil twin access point. We will be going through all six threats, but uh, just to give you an outlay of what they are. So evil twin is the first and probably the most dangerous. Then we have misconfigured APs. It's the most common problem that people have with their Wi-Fi. Rogue access points. Then we have rogue clients, neighbor, neighborhood access points, and then obviously the ad hoc network. So the first one, as I said, evil twin access points. This is probably the one of the worst and the most common that's out there. This is now used by a lot of hackers now to actually pretend to be the same access point as what you are transmitting. What they do is they actually set their pineapples or their devices of choice, sometimes Kali Linux, uh, to mimic the same access, that access point or SSID that you're actually transmitting. They will also use the same um, MAC address to actually so they can actually fool the system so that the victims, i.e. the clients, will actually be confused which, which SSID they need to connect to. More commonly, if because the signal is stronger with the evil twin, they will jump onto that. Once they've jumped onto that, that means they are now the man in the middle. They're able to intercept all the credentials that they need and at the same time maybe backhauling the people back through a 4G connection or even back onto the local network so the user is none the wiser that they've actually been compromised. And with that, they can interject things like JavaScript and malware into the user's payload onto their browser. The next one is a mix, misconfigured access point. As I said, this is also something that's quite common where people have deployed an access point but may not have configured it correctly. Either A, deploying the SSID without actually putting any form of encryption on it, or B, just re not realizing that they have left the default passwords on there so any user can come along and try and work out how to actually join onto the Wi-Fi or even actually compromise the Wi-Fi that way. Rogue access points. Now, this is something that is definitely increasing. This is where people may actually plug a small thumb drive USB or maybe powered by a USB battery rogue access point or be even taking an old access point from home and plug it into the local network. This then can be actually done where they actually transmit a SSID that they only know, so it could be hidden. So you may not even see that it's on your network. You may not even see it broadcasting, but the hackers or maybe the employee has his own access point to be able to access what they need from outside the actual building or with inside the building. As I said, this is more common. I found this in some schools where kids are now using BT Home Hubs and plugging into the networks of the schools to bypass the security of the schools. Rogue clients, well, this is where a client has already joined or actually connected to a rogue access point or an evil twin. This means that that machine could be actually infected with some man in the middle attack. So this is where you need to actually make, and make sure that those clients are actually still protected so they can't connect to it or if they have actually connected to an evil twin or a rogue access point, that you make sure they don't connect back to the normal network until they've been scanned and cleaned. Neighborhood access point is probably the biggest pain that people have. For example, if you are sat in a large environment where you may have a Starbucks connected to your app. Ah, sorry, I've done the stupid thing. People slap. There we go. <coughs> where uh, you may have somewhere like a Starbucks located next door to you. <coughs> and because you want to keep your employees actually connected to your Wi-Fi, and to stop them from connecting to the free Wi-Fi next door to make sure that they are keeping with things like GDPR compliancy and not leaking commercial data out to their Gmail account. This is also turning into a bigger problem. You can't go to Starbucks and ask them to turn down their Wi-Fi as they won't. And you also can't do anything about it. Well, this with our system, we're able to actually make sure that all your authorized devices only stay on your network. Ad hoc networks. Now, this is something that is seen quite a lot where people have their own hotspots on their mobile phone and able to bypass your local security by actually just joining their devices to their mobile phones or transferring files from one machine to another machine. So circumventing all your security. This is also not a good thing, especially with GDPR nowadays. So why is Wi-Fi intrusion prevention so important? 
Well, it is because obviously with the use of hacking tools like the pineapple, now only about a hundred pounds now, and free software that you can obtain from the internet and over the, when you Google YouTube, you can see over a million ways to hack Wi-Fi. This is turning into a potential problem. A lot of people have got used to the idea of having a firewall to protect their perimeter. That is pretty normal. But when it comes down to Wi-Fi, which bleeds through windows, through glass, you know, this is something you need something to police and pre protect that. So you could look at it really as a firewall for Wi-Fi, making sure that when someone is on your network, they stay on your network. And also making sure that no one is actually doing something untoward whilst connecting. And now you need to make sure that, you know, the, you get good high performance when you have these sort of systems in place. There's nothing worse than having something that claims they can actually protect the network, but when you turn on the security, it makes the security, get, makes the actual Wi-Fi experience not usable. So this is also important. Now, when it comes down to these sort of Wi-Fi attacks, a lot of people think that it's all done at the top layer of the OSRE layer model, but I'm afraid no. If you look at things like the evil twin attack, this is all done in the layer two area. So this is way low down. So anything that you use, you need to be able to actually identify these sort of frame attacks and stuff like that at the lower level. And this is where a lot of systems fail. So here at WatchGuard, we have our unique system. We have 28 patterns that actually helps us to identify and be able to protect the system. How is this done? Well, we have a thing called marker packets. Our marker packets are transmitted on the wire and is actually essential for all Wi-Fi APs to actually transmit this. Our own APs and WIP systems are able to identify the marker packets. And when we see the marker packets being transmitted, we know that it's not coming from one of our own systems because our own WIPs and also APs will actually not transmit those SS, that particular marker packet. And if we see it, we know to actually take it out. Now, this is where it's slightly different. Because we're actually identifying and able to see this, we're able to then do the deals that's required to actually take the unit out legally. And this is where a lot of people have the problem. Because when you look at third party vendors out there, they're unable to do this legally because they're not 100% sure that they are actually connected to the network. While for us, where we're actually interjecting this on the wire, we can say 100% that that device is connected to our network and we are taken out legally. We can also auto classification the access points and clients as well. So when a client is actually connected to an authorized AP, they are now seen as an authorized client. Being an authorized client means that when, if we see that device, say iPhone or something like that, is actually trying to connect to a next door neighbor, next a neighborhood AP, and we can say that's not allowed and we can actually then deauth them from connecting to that particular SSID and to put them back onto the corporate network. And having our authorized wireless policy makes this a lot easier. Intrusion prevention capabilities are very strong and it also means it's monitoring 365 days a year. With PCI compliancy, it is said that you should do a PC audit at least once a month once a month is not good enough. If you're gonna see a man walking around with a laptop with errors on there, you know that he's doing a Wi-Fi scan. Well, you just turn off any rogue access point that you have. Well, with this, this is running 365, so making sure that if anything does get fired up, we are turning it off instantaneously. Device MAC address banning as well is also there, so we can actually see if we see common MAC addresses that are coming through. Now, I do appreciate that MAC addresses can be spoofed, but as you can understand, there's so many they can spoof and we can identify. Smarter device recognition. So we're able to identify whether it's a mobile phone, whether it's a laptop, and be able to give it different rules for those devices. And BYOD policy enforcement, making sure that if a user is bringing their own devices into the network, that we actually force them through to a different portal and also in eventually putting them on a different SSID. But here's the thing, you may already have your ruckus, you may already have a Cambian system, and you'll sit there going, my customer's not going to buy anything else. Well, you don't need to do rip and replace. We have the ability for you to use our WIP sensors. Our WIP sensors means that when you are actually out there, you can actually deploy a WIP sensor to protect any other person's Wi-Fi system and protecting it and using the WIP system. Protecting this from the six known threats is crucial. And this is how you can do it. So you would only have one WIP sensor for every four APs that are deployed. 
So for every ruckus AP that you have there, you'd only need one whip sensor scanning the airwaves. Now the way we do this is also on the A and B channels. So that means that where you can actually transmit and see further. So that's why we only need one or four. We give unprecedented whip security, protecting 100% of the time. And as I said, 365 constantly on the all the time. Even if internet connectivity is lost, the whip sensors will carry on working no matter what, protecting the airspace. So if it, and when it comes down to reporting and the management, if this is all done in the cloud, using our Discover app, you're able to see who's actually connected and it will inform you straight away of any rogue access points or any devices that are actually not compliant and actually what should actually happen. Now, if you have this system turned on automatically, obviously it will stop the users from connecting. If you have it on monitor only, then you can have an email notification to let you know something has happened. But personally, I don't see the point of that. Why tell you that something's happened at three in the morning when you're asleep, when you can have the system fully on helping to protect. So off, WatchGuard offers all you partners out there the ability to have a design system. Here at Perdicom, they have their own guys that can actually do this for you as well. So when you have these deployments and you want to give that extra security for your customers, all you need to do is tell Perdicom that you want to put in WIPs to protect the airspace. As you can understand, you walk around the world, people are using hotspots all the time. Is it really safe? Well, we keep telling people that you need to use VPNs. But as you can understand, Joe Public doesn't understand what a VPN is now. So we need to be able to make it safe for them to use this. So you can use our design services here. But this is all stemmed from our trusted wireless environment. This is what we're trying to push out to the industry, the ability to make sure that the industry is actually compliant and making sure the internet is safe, or Wi-Fi is safe. So first off, having marking leading performance, making sure that when a user buys their Wi-Fi, they actually are getting the top speeds that they're advertised that they should get on all their Wi-Fi experience. Number two, scalability, not being held to ransom that they can only host something like 50 access points and must buy a new controller to be able to actually do this going forward. And three, verifying that their security can do the main things they say, but providing most importantly, protecting the users against the six known Wi-Fi threats and allowing the users to be able to work without any hindrance. So here I have a video of where I go on the road, and there you can find me on LinkedIn, where I do a number of uh, showing the evil twin in progress. So this video you're going to see now is me actually doing Barclays Bank. Hope you enjoy. Hi, it's me again, and I'm on the prowl again, as I'm still in Leeds. I'm sat on a street opposite Barclays Bank. Yes, I'm actually opposite Barclays Bank. They're closed at the moment. And I'm actually, just to show you, let's have a look. Barclays. Lovely summer afternoon. So, let's do the TWE hack. You know how it works. Basically, I go to my filters, I'm sorry, need my phone that is connected to it. So, there you go. And we're going to go and do the hack on them. So, this is the bank. You can expect them to have some security. Let's hope. So we go in and update on that one. Obviously I'll turn my Wi-Fi off my phone and we wait for the little green message to go away. It's gone and now turn it back on again. And we wait for it to join back to their Wi-Fi. Let's see what happens. Waiting. There we go. And boom, there you go. 172.16.42.174. So, Barclays, you have my money. You have free Wi Fi, but it's not secure. That's not good. I'd expect better from a bank. There you go. See you later. Bye. So, there you saw me actually <coughs> at Leeds City Centre sat outside Barclays testing their free Wi-Fi. This proves that actually the evil twin is rife everywhere. Why? Because it's easily done. That system you see in front of you is actually a pineapple. A pineapple, as I said, costs about £99. It's very simple to actually use. In fact, I've been using a pineapple from Pineapple Day 1, which was all Linux command line based. Nowadays, it's just drag and drop, and it's very simple to do. But this is the problem. 
Everyone has this free Wi-Fi, but they don't have this sort of protection to stop their users. Now you can understand banks are very sensitive when it comes down to their data. And the idea that someone can actually do this to them is not good. But you only have to look at other places that I've done, places like airports, uh, Tesco's, all those sort of places, fast food outlets, all these sort of places where people use their Wi-Fi and need to have protection. But it's not just that, you also have to think about offices as well because we have sensitive data that we don't want people to make sure that they, they, you know, it's kept internal. And that sensitive data must only be kept for employees. Last thing you want is a man in the car, sat outside in the car park with a little pineapple sitting there trying to actually get that intelligent data from your Wi-Fi. So that's why WIPS is needed. I'd like to say thank you very much for everything. I have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you today. And obviously we look forward to speaking to you in the future. So thank you.